Hello and welcome to my video all about how to bind off cables. Normally I do the basic knit bind off technique at the end of my knitting projects. However, with cables I have to do things a little bit differently. This is because cables have a relatively high stitch gauge, which means that if you look at the width of your knitted project, the number of stitches per inch is relatively high. You can see this quite clearly if we look here. Essentially, you're just twisting some stitches over other stitches, and this bunches up those stitches and therefore narrows your knitting. So if, after finishing knitting my cable, I then bound off each stitch individually, as I normally would, I'd end up with a really wide bound off edge in comparison to the knitting. So the solution is to include decreases within the bind off technique. This will counteract the bunching up effect of the cable stitches and it will stop the finished edge from flaring out. In this particular example, I'm knitting a scarf and the cable is worked across the central 18 stitches. On either side of the cable are three non-cable stitches. And we're going to treat these stitches the same as we would normally. It's only across the cable stitches that we're going to be doing the decreases. I'm going to be using knit two together single decreases or K2 togs as they're otherwise known. The general rule is that you want to do a single decrease for every two or three stitches in the cable. So because my cable is 18 stitches wide, I can either do 18 divided by two, which is nine single decreases, or I can do 18 divided by three, which is six single decreases. And you should spread these decreases out evenly across the width of the cable. If I was going to do six decreases spread out over 18 stitches, I would do a knit stitch, then a K2 tug, knit stitch, K2 tug, etc. all the way across the cable width. However, I'm going to do nine decreases. And because I'm doing K2 togs, which take up two stitches, I'm going to be doing nine K2 togs in a row. Right, so to begin the bind off, I'm going to knit two stitches. Remember, I'll be treating these first three stitches and the last three exactly how I would normally. And that's because these stitches are not involved in the cable. I then use my left hand needle to pick up the bottom stitch on the right hand needle and take it over the stitch above it and off the end of the needle. I then knit another stitch and do exactly the same. So I pick up that bottom stitch and take it over the one above it and off the needle. And now I've reached the beginning of the 18 stitch cable. I'm now going to do nine K2 togs in a row, which will halve the number of cable stitches from 18 to nine. So to do a K2 tog, you simply knit two stitches together. So you take the right hand needle up through the top two stitches and then just do a knit stitch. And then bind off on the right hand needle as usual by taking the bottom stitch over the top one and off the needle. And then I just repeat that eight more times across the width of the cable. Okay, so now we've done all the decreases and we just treat the last three stitches as we normally would when binding off. So we knit one and bind off, knit one and bind off, knit one and bind off. And here you can see that the bound off edge is the same width as the knitting, despite the edge being 15 stitches wide and the knitting being 24 stitches wide. And then what you need to do is cut the working yarn to leave you with about eight to 12 inches of yarn tail. 
I'm leaving myself a much longer yarn tail just because I'm going to be using it to sew the ends of the scarf together. Then take that tail through the last stitch and tighten before weaving in the end of that yarn. And that's it, that's how you bind off cables. I really hope this has been useful to you and thank you very much for watching.